great mission. I got a really good response from the last video he was in because of all the sick drone footage. Um, we're at London Bridge this time, so a lot more populated. He's crazy as fuck, so we might still actually pull out the drone. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, today's another photo mission. Oh. There's a drone in there. Damn. A drone? A drone? Surely not a drone. Maybe. See, this is why you're my favorite photographer. Normal shot, literally anything it takes for the photo. And quickly on my mind. Hey there. And, then, and then look how interesting it looks. Jeez. Jeez. Don't worry, Lightroom can fix anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, one thing that like even I'm getting into the mentality of doing, and he does all the time, is just like looking at where light seeps through. I didn't realize this, but photography is like literally just 90% lighting. So, areas like this, where there's like high contrast, that was really cool to shoot at. Yeah. But I thought because I was with Jonah and okay, yeah, get in the frame now. I thought because I was with him and um, you know he's a much much more experienced photographer than I am. He's been doing it for like four, four years, five years, five years, yeah, five years. So he knows a thing or two, um, and he knows how to work with clients. Um, and just overall, overall, he's just like a lot more professional than I am. I know a lot of you guys are content creators or wannabe, so I thought I'd leave you guys with like a little interview segment where um, he'll just break down everything he's learned from his five years in, within photography. Yo, what going guys? So today we're doing a little interview segment on that. Hey, what's up guys? My name is James, also known as Jonah River. Um, I've been a photographer for about five years now. I got into it firstly through YouTube, doing videos. Um, and then upgraded my camera and since then photography has just become a massive part of my life. The main tip for beginners to get clients, honestly um, get a portfolio first. So if you want to be shooting portraits of models, shoot loads of your friends, shoot any attractive people you know and then you can go to a client with work you've already done and they'll understand why they'd want to hire you. Like if you just, if you show them photos of buildings and want to get work being for models you're not going to get any work. I don't know if finding a niche is that important really because every time you find a client they'll be looking for a few different things so they'll be looking for photography and video and marketing all sorts you might meet someone you're doing an architecture shoot and they want you to do their wedding so I think being as diverse as possible when you start out is probably the most important thing. So in terms of getting good photos the best thing you can do obviously is practice as much as possible um, and just constantly be critical of your own work so look back at your photos over and over again, pick out everything you don't like about them, everything you do, and every time you then take photos after that, you've got that in mind. Consume as much as you can of people you, you aspire to be like, and the more you spend time practicing and thinking about why you like photos and what makes them good, the more it just becomes second nature. Um, gear is important. Uh, definitely you can start with an entry level camera and that will teach you the basics, but as I said, as soon as I got a proper camera, that then took it to the new level. So buy something basic, exhaust it until it is the only thing limiting you, and then when you know that it, that is the case, then upgrade, and then it just gives you another, it's like going up a floor. It gives you a whole new perspective on things. Yeah, Instagram is sick. Um, I mean, the best thing about Instagram is that it gives you the capacity to network with other creators and have constant access to people that are as good or better than you for inspiration. Um, and it's just, it gives you a reason to build up a portfolio every day. So, hope you enjoyed that little segment. We out here. Shoot. So from, from one piece of content creation to the next, um, look, I think I told you guys, I'm like, I'm willing to and prepared to invest way more into my personal brand. So I picked up the Jiyun Crane, a really cool stabilizer gimbal, uh, and we're here with Lewis now. Well, the next so yeah, it's time to yeah. unbox it. Enthusiasm you're putting in. <laughs> there it is. The Jiyun Crane stabilizer. 
Yeah. Now we just gotta figure out how to set this thing up. And uh, we'll go take it for a spin, I guess. Literally an hour and a half later. I've, by the way, keep in mind, I've never had a glide cam. I've never had any stabilizer of any sort. So an hour and a half later, here we are. Um, uh, yeah, here we are. I finally got it to work. I'm still, let's see. I'm still really bad at this. But that's pretty cool, right? Okay, you see, you can tell when I twist, when I twist to the side, something's off. So I don't know how to fix that, as I said. Never back and forth though, or like when I bring it down. Oh, cool. Whoopsie. Yeah, I've never had a stick. <laughs> you see, there you go. I've never had a stabilizer or gimbal, anything of the sort before. So I'm still such a noob at it. But. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So that was pretty much what an hour and a half work for being able to do this. How could I explain this without bringing on concern? So guys, that was my little play around with the Zhiyun Crane. I'm sure it's gonna come in handy going forward. Right now, I'm still terrible at it, so uh, we'll give it a go next next vlog probably. I was actually planning on doing like a run and gun style today video with it, just like 20 minutes off the cuff. Um, Lewis was gonna help me. Um, he was gonna be the cameraman, uh, but because we literally took or I literally took two hours to set it up. We didn't have time to do that because it's dark now but uh yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog if you have please leave a like it means the world to me okay the outro three two sometimes you worry about the things he can provide for you whenever you around i seem to come alive for you i finally recognize the feelings that's inside for you although